Good day, Fred friends. Um, something uh, rather unusual uh, right now, and it's because I have had a neck comeback. And uh, those of you that have been watching my channel recently will know that I have had problems with certain tools, and because of my tools, uh, which have failed, um, I've been let down on a couple of jobs, and this is one of them, which is there, this neck, and uh, the guy wasn't happy with my fret leveling, and uh, it became apparent that because my tools let me down, it's probably not as level as they normally would if I'd done it right. Now, my, my tool I used uh, on this job, uh, as far as I, I was concerned, it was absolutely fine. It was only after I'd got complaints about this that I realised that the tool had a problem. And the tool in question is my G and W fret rocker, which is not straight along this edge. And it explains why I've had to, well, I'm not only redoing this guitar, there's another one I've got to completely refret as well because of that. So in the meantime, what I've been doing is I've gone and ordered new tools. I've put a halt on everything. So explain what this neck is. It is a warmoth neck, like a flame maple type affair. Expensive neck, stainless steel frets. And uh, the problem with this neck is the neck has a problem anyway. The, uh, the neck is not straight. And in hindsight, I should have refused this job because looking down the length here, you'll see that the neck goes across, in and out again. So it's like an S shape. It bends that way. That's because this is not as I sent it out. This neck is nowhere near straight. I sent this out straight. Uh, it's been altered since I sent it out. So I'm going to change that area. But here, if you look down this line here, it comes out, goes in, and comes out again at the end. That line is not right. And I shouldn't have accepted this job, but in here, I think it's because it's been altered. So I'm just showing that this is how the neck came to me, came back, it has back bow. Now the owner of this neck, Tom, said he had taken it to another luthier to get a second opinion, and the other luthier has altered the neck. So that is not as I sent it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this neck dead straight as I sent it out, or as straight as I think it could possibly be, as I sent it out, and I'm going to check my work, and I'm going to be absolutely meticulous about every measurement, because I know Tom, the owner of this, says the frets are certainly lower than one millimetre, and they're a lot lower than they were when he sent it. Now, I don't 100% agree with that. I agree that seven or eight frets are certainly lower than when he sent it, because those seven or eight frets were high. But without arguing, uh, because he wasn't happy with the work, I said, right, this is what we'll do. And this is what I always do. Uh, if, if you're not happy with my work, I will always fetch the guitar back or whatever it is, a neck or whatever, at my own expense. And I will put it right and I will get it back to you all at my expense. Now, in this case, I've talked with Tom about it, talked with Tom about this. And I said, look, because the neck is not right, maybe in hindsight, I should have... Uh, offered a refret rather than a fret level. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to refret this. I'm going to refret this with stainless steel fret wire, which I have bought myself. It's cost me £26. I've paid for the postage of this to come back to me, and I'll pay postage for it to go back to him, um, which is £20 each way. So that's already cost me, say, £70. And I've said, I'm going to send it to you. I'm not going to charge you any extra. But if you're happy with the refret, I'm also going to put in a new nut. I'm going to completely refret it. I said, if you're happy with the refret, when you get it back, then pay me the extra, which will, in this case, it will be blah, 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 blah. I'm charging 275 quid for a refret. It's already paid me 115, so he will owe me 160 pounds. Um, and that'll be it. He won't pay any extra postage. I'll pay all that. So we've both agreed to that. So I'm quite happy with that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get this straight first. I'm going to check my work. And if he's, if, if he's, if Tom's right about everything he said, um, then I'll absolutely do this with no qualms whatsoever, uh, none at all. We're not falling out, we've both been very adult about it. End of the day, my tool let me down. So what have I done in the meantime? Well, for me to do this job properly, I'm gonna need better tools because I've never done a stainless steel refresh. So in the meantime, I've not worked for over nearly three weeks now. Everything has been on halt. I've not earned a penny. In, in fact, the last person to pay me any money was Tom, who paid me the money for this £115, which was nearly three weeks ago. I've not earned a penny in that three weeks because everything's ground to a halt. And I've gone and ordered a load of new tools. There being one of them, here being another one, and uh, and here being another one. Blah, 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 blah. And the tools that have arrived are uh, a Veritas straight edge. This is just a piece of steel, precision ground at both edges, completely flat. That's cost me 49 pounds. 
I've also bought a Stumac fret rocker. Would you believe this has cost me £47 to import from America? The item itself is $28, which is about £23. There was £10 postage, that's £33, and I'm at £13 import tax and VAT and a ship and a handling charge. So this has cost me £46. In hindsight, I should have ordered this from Madinta, which is a company in um, in Spain that sells Stumac gear. I have also ordered a load of gear from Madinta, uh, Stumac gear, and this could have gone on it. It would have got here a lot quicker, but those tools aren't here yet. It's why I've not resumed my work. I've also bought this from Guitar Tools International, which arrived this week. This was, I think it's a £13 delivered. Uh, and I've spent £350 on tools. I have new files coming. Um, I know I would not be able to do a stainless steel refret without the tools I've ordered. I've, what I've paid £125 for one file to be able to do this. So it's not that I'm out of pocket because I will use the tools in the future and it was time I upgraded. It's just I need to be absolutely meticulous and bang on about this. I, I'm t I totally do not agree that I've taken more material off these frets than I needed to. Uh, I'm going to measure them with my digital calipers in a minute. They are definitely one millimetre anyway. I know Tom was a little bit annoyed that I'd taken more off this edge. Uh, that would be because of the fret rocker because my old fret rocker i got the fret level but when i was going across with this where this edge is not right it was telling me that these frets around here were not level so i was removing material off the edge and off the edge and off the edge and every time i removed material from one i went back and checked again and it, then the one behind it was high so i've removed, removed material all the way down this edge of the fingerboard probably not on the not inside but probably the last two millimeters so I hold my hands up to that. Um, that said, I've never been against rolling off a little bit down this edge because the nut is always cut. It is not a uniform radius. It always goes lower on this side. So if a nut was cut that way, I'm always gonna radius the fret slightly a bit lower on this side anyway. It's something I've always done. So that is not out of the ordinary. Now he took this to a guy in Brighton who checked it over with his tools. And uh, he was telling me I've got gaps everywhere. Now, I've not checked this, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Tom's accused me of something I haven't done at all. Absolutely not doing that. I've not checked this yet. I've got my not straight, I've got, not my not straight edge, I've got my precision straight edge here, which once I've got the next straight and I've altered the truss rod, I will check everything. And I will go in under that with a microscope. This is the tool made by Veritas Canada. It's a 24 inch steel nice and thick precision ground straight edge you won't get straighter than that so i've got that to check everything with i've also checked my leveling beam my leveling beam i was leveling frets and the fret rock was telling me we weren't level i've checked this with this to make sure that it is ground precision flat and it is absolutely flat there is not a gap you can see between these two pieces of metal so i know this is put ground perfectly flat and this is ground perfectly flat. So they are tools I trust. I paid £30 for this about five, six years ago. Uh, added precision ground perfectly flat. That is my levelling beam. So I know they are fine. I've checked my new tools on here. And get the other one. And on here. Absolutely no light shining through there. So I know these new tools are perfect. So I am ready to go again with new tools. I will be double checking everything. Every refret now will be checked with both of these fret rockers. There's 60 quid's worth of fret rockers here. Um, you can't get better than these two. This one's actually really nice and thick. I'm really pleased with that. So very happy with those. I have paid over the odds. Um, so there you go. That is 60, 110. That's 140 quid's worth of tools right there in front of you now. So I do trust those. I still have more tools on the way, but there are certain things I can do today. Now what we're going to do first is we are going to check. I'm just taking this again out of its packaging. Blah, 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 blah. There's the original packaging. There's the receipt I sent to Tom. Uh, fret friend, blah, 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 blah. I've charged him. 115 quid because it was stainless steel. Taught me a lot. You've seen the video. Um, but I will be videoing this again. 
I'm going to measure these threads. I'm going to get my neck straight. It's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to show this is for the benefit of the owner of a neck. A beautiful neck it is. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I can't afford to be out of pocket on any of these jobs because I've lost a lot of time. I've not worked for two and a half weeks now. Uh, I'm three weeks behind on other work. I've not earned a penny in three weeks. And I have a month's amount of work on the board that should have been, uh, actually should have been done by the end of the week coming up. So I've got three weeks work there I've got to do. But anyway, just going to show that the neck has back bow in it. I think you can see it has back bow in it. Let me just show you, I'm going to get, I'm going to hold it to the camera there. And you'll see it's back bowed down here. Now I didn't send it back to Tom like this, so it has been altered since I sent it, which is fair enough, that's fine. So you'll see it there. And you'll see the bow in the neck here. Now this neck, it goes up, it bows, it levels out, but it comes back and it goes up again. Very, very, here. I wonder if I can shut this end even better. It curls up at this end, so it curls up, goes back down, goes in, and comes in again. It's like an S shape, it's like this. It, follow this, it goes that way, then it comes back this way. So it's going blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Not straight at all. This is why we had that gap originally in the first part. Like I say, in hindsight, I should have refused to do this, um, but I didn't know the tool was not going to be right either, did I? So what I've decided to do is, what I'm going to do is, once I've got this all checked up, I'm going to remove the knot, I'm going to remove the frets, uh, we're going to get the neck as straight as I can possibly get it, and we are going to re-radius the whole fingerboard. I'm going to re-radius it all to, I think we're going to go with nine and a half inch radius. I will talk to Tom about possibly doing a 12 inch radius, because it's just going to be flat all the way along. I've already got the fret wire. I ordered, that's come from Ireland. Uh, again, I had to order it in two parts because one part came, I didn't order enough. It's stainless, it's Jeskar stainless steel fret wire. And there are seven pieces there. It is jumbo size. It is very high, it's 1.5 millimeters high. I recommend we go higher with higher fret wire because with the neck undulating up and down, even though I'm gonna re-radius it, it 1.5 millimeters high it gives me a lot more to level, a lot more to play with. Uh, I may have to go and buy a couple of more files to actually level them, uh, which I don't, I mean, I can get a couple of files for 50 quid. There would be tools I'd be using in the future anyway, but this is a reason I'm charging so much more now for a um, stainless steel refret. My normal refret start at 175 pounds, plus the price of the fret wire, plus a new nut if you need it, and a set of strings. So 175 pounds plus hardware. If you have a lacquered fingerboard, it's 35 pound extra. Um, if you're binding, it's £35 extra. If you're binding and lacquer, it's £70 extra, blah, 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 you get how it works. But a stainless steel refret, no compromise whatsoever, I'm going to charge £275 before we even start. On top of that, you pay for the fret wire. If you have a band neck, there's an extra 35 quid. If it has lacquer on the fingerboard, it's an extra 35 quid. I am proper charging a full good amount for doing a refret with stainless steel because it is so much more work. It's very hard on tools. I bought a file for 125 pounds and I'll probably get five refrets out of it using stainless steel. So you understand I have to upgrade my files every single time. If I'm paying an extra 50, 60 quid on tools for each refret, uh, someone's got, that's got to be factored in. It also takes a lot more hours to work the stuff. So in future, um, where I was charging £250 for a stainless steel refret, I'll be charging £275 plus the price of a fret wire, the price of the nut, and if it needs lacquering or it's got binding or whatever, it's going to be extra on top. I'll put the prices up on my website, on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. Um, you can read more about that in a bit. So I'm sorry if I, it seems like I'm prattling on a little bit, it's just, you know, end of the day, I am behind on my work. Uh, I've talked to everyone, everyone's been fantastic about it. And, you know, but people are now waiting for their stuff, so I need to crack on, get stuff done. This will be being done, I'm not doing this in my work time, I will be in my workshop from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., five days a week, and from 6 p.m. until I want to work, maybe 10 p.m., I will be working on this, so it will be do, being done in my own time. I'm going to, if I'm doing a refret, which I'm probably going to, I'm going to start that, probably going to happen on Tuesday. 
uh, but I'm going to look at getting, Monday is the day I'm probably going to get all this fingerboard sorted out, get everything checked out. Um, I'm gonna, I need to work out if this is worth doing. If it's not, I could give the guy his money back, post this back to him, and um, we'll leave it there. I could talk to him about if he wanted to sell me this, I could give him his money back and give him some extra for this. Uh, with the tuners on as well, factor that into it. That might be better for him, it'll give him more money towards a brand new neck, he might be into that. And I will then end up with a brand new Warmoth Telecaster neck um, for maybe, you know, not as much as it would normally cost me. I can refret it myself anyway. So these are options I could consider. I'm sure Tom is open to it. Tom is already prepared to say, look, it's been a bad job, right? It's not helping anybody out. It, we're not going to be able to get it or it's going to be too expensive or whatever. Just give him money back. He'll scrap the net and go buy another one. He's already, we've already kind of discussed that. So it may be an option for me to actually give him some compensation for this. You know, pay him back what he paid. And uh, we'll see where it goes anyway. So let me get my trust rod adjuster in there. I believe it's a four mil. And I'm going to I'm just going to check where it is actually because all right okay there is a lot of backbone there there is at least quarter of a millimeter backbone so I need to get that straight is that the right one is it a four mil I thought it was I got the wrong <laughs> no doesn't seem like it is, because that's not doing anything. That doesn't feel good. Bear with me a second. We'll keep the camera rolling. I'm sure that was a four mil. Four millimeters. Oh, that looks a bit big. Okay, let's give it a go. Might just not be at the right angle to get that in. Right, we're going to loosen. See where we are. Okay, we've certainly got relief in there now. We've still got a little bit of relief. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this in the vice in a minute. And we're going to get the not we're going to get, not the not straight edge. We're going to get the precision straight edge on here, and we're going to check everything I've done. I know why the frets aren't level, and we're going to go across with the fret rocker I used. It. Right now, we are exactly it's more or less exactly where it was when I took this job on. If you remember rightly, we had a quarter of a millimeter gap under these frets down here. Frets about frets thirteen to to nineteen, I think. Just move the camera. Let's just come in a little, there you go. Is that okay for you guys? Uh, you can check back a couple of three or four videos of mine and you will see what we did with this one. I think, is that the right feeling gauge? Yes it is, perfect. Okay. So I'm sorry you can't see everything, but I've got the not straight edge on there. I've got that as straight as it was when I did the job last time. We've got 0.25 millimeters on the feeler gauge. And let's just have a look. And there you go. Probably a little bit less. Let's go 0.2. Here you go. And here. It's not as pronounced as it was before, so let's just check again. I'll just check again. We've got this straight. Okay, we've just got a little bit, we're a little bit backbone still on this corner. Get this edge straight. Right, I'm liking that. That is as I set it up. So let's go with the 0.2 millimeters. And there you go, it's just, just going under. There you see. Just going underneath. This is exactly as it was when I first did it. So we have this little gap under there. Now you should be able to see it just under this area. 0.2 mil coming under there. 
if I can show you the neck again from this angle, try and get full on there. You see, it is not perfectly straight. You see it here, there's a curve. Oh my goodness. You can, if you can't see it here, you're blind. There is a curve. Let me just show it. There's a curve here on the on this part coming this way. Like a, like it is curving down that way. Can you see it? Let's see if I can get a straight edge on there. If I've got a short enough straight edge. I may have something like a bar. Okay, let's have a look. See if I can get this held on there. Yeah, there you go. Look at the difference there. Can you see that guys? Can you see this gap where my wrist is? There's a two mil difference. We'll get that right on that edge there, that on that edge there. Look at this. And that's here. We've got a dip in there and that was always the problem. That's why I was leveling the frets across there. So I'm gonna to have to work around that. My goodness. Let me, just gonna move the camera to where I can set it up better for you. Because I need to be absolutely, I'm meticulous when it comes to frets. And if they're not right, I need to know why they're not right because this is my livelihood. I've got fantastic reviews on Facebook and I have to get things right. Okay, so let's look, oh, there you go. So we're looking here and it curves down that way and I'm gonna see if I can get a straight edge on there for you guys. Right, we'll take it from there, we'll get that where it needs to be. And there you go. And there you go, see that gap there? And that is right on the edge there. You see there the difference? There's a one mil difference here. And that is because it curves down. That's why we've got that gap under these frets. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to check these frets while we're here. I've not done this yet at all. I'll take my straight edge, precision straight edge. I thought I checked everything with this because I know this is precise as well. Yes, and there's definitely a gap on that fret there, that fret there. So Tom was absolutely right. And I can't argue with any of that. Uh, if I'd have known that, that was like that, I would not have let that out. This is saying different, but there is still a gap. I'm gonna take a light from behind. So I tore my hands up to that. Okay, so I'm going to go for a refret. Let's check with the new not straight edge along the whole length. Not the not straight edge, sorry. Fret rocker, so let's go here. That's okay, okay. High there. Yep, high there. Yep, yep. Okay, well, when we get to here, they are level again. So, the edge that let me down, this one, is where the frets are rocking. Let's check with this one, check with Stu Mac one. Yep, yep. All the threes, all the ones on that edge, but the rest of them are fine. Go with the guitar tools one. This is actually good for me. 
because it shows that the tool has let me down, it's not my work. But an uneven fret is an uneven fret. So there we are. I'm going to get my calipers out. I'm going to measure these frets. Just measure the height. Okay, I've just gone back to a wide angle lens on the camera just so we can see more stuff. And I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to stay zoomed out. Right, okay. So this is not to fall out with anyone at all. But the reason I really wanted this neck back. Not, but well, the main reason I wanted it back was so I can put it right, uh, what I did wrong. But obviously I needed to check and be meticulous about checking everything that I, I've been told was wrong with the job. And I know the guy talked to the guy, he took this uh, neck to another luthier. He, he said he, he just happened to have it in his bag, which, okay, fair enough. I can't argue with that. If he happened to have it in his bag, he did. And he took it to another luthier, a guy in Brighton. I'm going to, I'm going to contact the luthier myself. Um because I don't agree with what the luthier has told Tom. And you see, end of the day, I have to stand my ground and I have to be meticulous in every check that I do because my reputation is of paramount importance to me. So let's get to where the things that were said in the email. And I was told that more material had been removed from these frets than was necessary and they were lower than one millimeter. Both of those accusations are untrue. I've been and measured the frets from this one to this one. The lowest is 1.12 millimeters height and the highest is 1.16. That's a difference of 0.04, which really is nothing. But in a, in a, especially in a fret level where a neck undulates anyway, that is not out of the ordinary. You could expect anything around about that to 0 0.06, 0 0.08 even. Um, so I do not agree that these frets are lower than one millimeter. However, these edges here do look to be lower. Now I've just measured them and they are very, very close to a millimeter, but they are still over a millimeter. But the thing is, I've always rolled over frets at the last two millimeters of the edge of the fingerboard anyway, because like I say, a knot here always angles down this side because you have these strings lower. So because the nut's cut that way, I, som I sometimes just bring the frets on this edge down anyway to compensate for that. That said, there's only this much of fret lower. Now, if he doesn't like that, fair enough, and he has a right to complain about that, but the height of the frets in any of the playing areas are not anywhere near lower than 1.1 1 1, 1. 1 millimeters. Uh, I am going, what I've said I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this neck absolutely straight as straight as it was when I did the fret level, and I'm gonna check them again. I'm still saying we should go for a refret. The reason I'm saying a refret is because of the neck being lower here, this dip, which we knew about from the start, I'm gonna re-radius the whole fingerboard. And we are going with a non-compound radius. We're gonna go with a flat, well not a flat radius, but a uniform radius. So I'm still recommending that we do that. All I really try to establish here is, if I messed up where I messed up, and if I did something wrong, where I did something wrong, and I know that I did something wrong. Now, I know the frets are uneven, and they're rocking because of a faulty tool, and that's fine. Uh, if it's just because of a faulty tool, I'm perfectly happy with that. But end of the day, if I made a mistake, right, I need to know in, in my own heart, I need to, or in my mind, right, I need to know where I made a mistake, where I messed up, and what I did wrong, just so I don't do it again. Um, I knew Tom was quite, I won't say pick is not the word. Tom wanted a specific job doing. When he first contacted me, he said he doesn't want the frets touching, he just wants the neck straightening. Now I saw that I could straighten necks. So I said, there's no way you can straighten this neck because it's a manufacturing fault. The only way we can make this guitar playable is by leveling, getting the neck as straight as we can and leveling the frets. It means some frets in some places have had more material moved or, or removed than others to get the playing surface level because the playing surface is not the fingerboard as i said it is the frets so that is what i did so some frets are going to be lower anyway uh, because of the undulating nature or and the dip in this part of the fingerboard here this neck here goes it goes sort of straight there then it goes down then up again at the end it also goes down so it goes down from this end it's a little bit lower so it goes up straight 
down then up at this end and that's a manufacturing fault along this area here this is why I had to make the plane surface the frets so that is where I am on this I don't think these are stainless steel frets they don't wear so if we have to re-level these and bring them down to one millimeter anything above 0.8 millimeters right is spot on you said when we get below 0.8 millimeters we have a problem now if these aren't going to wear and these are already at 1.1 millimeter all right i could re-level these re-crown them re-polish them and the next done that is going to be the cheapest way for me cosmetically and for future the best thing to do with this and i should have suggested this in the beginning there's two things i could have suggested one i'm not doing it or two in future i won't do jobs like this or i'll recommend a refret what I'm recommending we do with this is I refret it. I've already gone and spent £350 on new tools for stainless steel refrets. So we may as well refret it. And I'm taking the chance of not being paid for this. I've showed out £350 on tools. I've lost three weeks' work. I've, uh, I, I could have earned, in that three weeks, I could have earned 15, 16, 1700 quid. I've earned nothing. Um, I've ground to a halt, and everyone's waiting for their guitars, and they're going to be, some, of, some people are going to be waiting for another month. So this is costing me more than anyone else, but I'm still prepared with this to refret it, send it back to Tom. If Tom's not happy with it, if I'm happy with it and Tom isn't, then there's something else I'm gonna suggest. But I'm gonna send it back to Tom and if he's not happy with it, he doesn't pay me any extra. Now I guarantee if I do a refret on this, if I ship this to him, I absolutely 100% guarantee there'll be nothing wrong with it because I am meticulous and it, this will not go back to him until it is right. Uh, but I'm taking the chance that he won't pay me. Uh, that is how much I trust my own work. If he gets it, says he doesn't like it, or he's not happy with the work, I'll say, well, I'll buy the neck off you then, because I know it's perfect. And I'm prepared to do that. I'm actually almost prepared now to say, look, how much do you want for this neck? Because I'll, I'll just keep it. I'll give you your money back that you paid me for having it done, including the postage, and uh, let me know how much you want on top, and I'll just give him the money. So if he wants, if he'd take like 100 quid for this, he wouldn't take 100 quid. But whatever price it was, I'd add it onto the top of his refund. And I'm quite prepared to do that myself and get this neck and keep it. Uh, I'll never be able to sell this because of this undulating bit here. But I can certainly use this. I have a parts caster and a parts teller. Well, I have two parts casters. I have a telly and a strat and building myself. I already have a warm-up neck. Um, and two warm-up necks would be good because I've got a strap one. And this is a telly one, and I'm building a strap to tell. So I'll be quite happy to keep this myself and refret it, sort this out, re radius it, and fret this myself. So I'm going to suggest that to Tom. Uh, we're not going to fall out over this. We already agreed that Tom has been absolutely brilliant um, since I suggested he send it back. Uh, I'm just really glad it's the tool that let me down and not my work. Uh, anything that ever goes out of this workshop now will be double checked and double checked again. Uh, because I will be absolutely meticulous. It's why I'm glad I've got these precision, I'm a precision leveller. I've got a precision straight edge. It weighs a ton, I could have done one thing. I might be an aluminium one, this is too heavy. Um, and two precision fret rockers, this one and this one. Uh, I've now gone for diamond crowning files. I've gone for a Z, Z file or a Z file from Stumac, which should be here Tuesday. I've got other tools coming from Stumac uh, that will be here on Tuesday. And at least it's keeping me on my toes now, but I will check and check everything because end of the day, I've been self-employed since May this year, fully self-employed. This is my only source of income and I have to get it right. And I do have this, uh, you get guarantees with me. You are not happy with my work at my expense, completely my expense. I will get the item back, whether it be a guitar, a neck, a mandolin or whatever. I will put it right until you're satisfied right and it will be at my expense now the only reason there's going to be more expense on this is it's now having a refret i've already said to him i'm going to charge the old refret when all said and done i'll charge you 275 quid for which is cheap um he's already paid me 115 quid uh, so he'll owe me another 160 uh, hang on he paid me 150 yeah be 160 quid uh, the shipping is all down to me that's if he wants to pay it um out of that 160 quid i'm well down uh, because of the tools I've, bought, I've got and bought, uh, the hours I've lost, and blah, 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 blah. So he's getting a deal. Uh, he'll be getting a great neck that he'll be happy with. If he doesn't want to keep the neck, like I said, I'll buy it off him. I'll give him his money back, and I'll buy the neck off him for a decent price as well, because I can use this. So if I gave him his 115 quid back and paid someone on top, 
you know, I'm not going to put a figure down because you might have a figure in mind. Um, but at least that way, it would have a big chunk of money towards a replacement neck, wouldn't it? So that is an option. This is going to be a very, very long-winded video um, because I've not finished it yet. I'm going to now measure all of these frets uh, with my digital caliper, just so I know I'm all right. I'm going to measure in three areas. I'm going to measure at the edge as best I can, which is not easy to do because we have that curve there. Um, but I know, you know, I'll be pretty all right. The middle is the easiest to measure. So I'll measure the center of each fret and I'll write down each fret, how high it is in the middle, uh, just so I know where I am. End of the day, I can't be messaging Tom, telling him things that aren't true. These frets look fine to me. I know we're not level down this edge. I'm gonna check the lot though. I'm gonna get this on a piece of MDF like I do. Uh, and I'm gonna check each fret. I'm gonna see where we're not level. Do I think a get away with fret level? It's touch and go. If I can get them down to no less than a millimeter and get them all level, I'll be really happy with that. And that means I don't have to refret it. Uh, but I'm at this moment in time very, very much prepared and happy to go with a refret. If it came to where I said to Tom says, look, how much would you give me for it? And he wanted me to buy this, I would do much more than a refret. I'd get all these pieces of plastic out and we'd put some, uh, we'd have some shell in there or some abalone. I'd redo all of that and re-radius the whole board. I'm not into, I'm not really into a compound radius uh, on a neck. But that is another thing for another day. Let me get some measuring done. We'll see where we are and I'll send this video off to Tom and he can have a look at it. Okay guys, so just one more thing before I send this video to Tom and it doesn't alter what we're gonna do to the guitar. We are still going for a refret, which is what we should have done in the first place. Um, it would have been possible to get the frets level uh, and even now it's still possible to get the frets level but I just wanted for my own peace of mind was I wanted to go across with my digital caliper and I wanted to measure as many frets as I could just to make sure that there weren't any under one millimeter because in the, in the text I got from Tom and on his Luthier on the Luthier down in Brighton's request it, the, between the mid said these frets were under one millimeter now I knew they weren't, I absolutely knew that. It, it, it's why it was, it, was not, it wasn't the main reason I wanted this neck back, but part of it was I, I needed to get it back just to check my work and to check everything. And the low, we do have one low fret on here, uh, but it's certainly not under a millimeter. It is 1.09 millimeters. Now consider this comes with 1.2 millimeter high frets, right? I have all of the frets, I've, imag I've measured 13 frets. The lowest is 1.09, the highest is 1.19. Now that, in the confines of a 1.2 millimeter fret with an undulating board, to get them all over one millimeter anyway, it, it is, well, it's not remarkable, but it's, you know, you would, you kind of expect to get some as low as about 1.05. Now I've been across my digital caliper and I have measured frets, and I've never measured, I've measured 11. And is this the right one? This is it, this is it. No, it isn't. I've, done, I've got a sheet of paper somewhere with the correct measurements. Here it is. And there you go. And there are the measurements, and there are the fret numbers. And frets 1 to 6, and frets 21 down to 17. I can only measure 6 at this end, because then you get past the heel. So we've got some odd readings, whereas the 1 at 21, right, the fret is actually, and the thickness is actually thicker than at fret 20, which means it's probably more lacquer at that end of the neck, right at the very end. But anyway, but here are your measurements, and you've got fret one, you've got 1.19 difference, 1.18, 1.13, 1.16, 1.18, 1.15 millimeters. Frets 21 down 17, 1.12, 1.18, 1.09, 1.19, 1.11. Um, I knew they were below a millimeter, but then again, you've got to consider, right, the discrepancies are in the areas where the fingerboard is, uh, the manufacturing process has gone wrong, where we've got this undulation at this end of the fingerboard. I just needed to check though that mine work and I haven't taken too, I know I've not taken too much material off because I only took material from the eight frets that really needed it. Anything else, we would have taken no more than 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, not, not 0 0.1, 0 0.11, or 0 0.01 or 0.02 millimeters, that's two hundredths. Because what, thing is, when I'm doing this with a sanding block, right, these are stainless steel frets. 
I can have the heaviest grit sanding paper on these frets, right? But when I'm doing the lot, it's not going to remove any material. Do you know how difficult stainless steel is to file? I've been talking to people, luthiers and friends of mine in America, and they've been saying I can change four or five sheets of sandpaper and still hardly touch these frets. I knew I'd not taken them too low, and I just need that to be clear. Um, but like I say, absolutely fine. These, down at this end, they, again, they look like they're lower than a millimetre, but they're not. It's just a, an illusion um, on these edges. You know, do we know what a millimetre is? A millimetre is a very, very small amount. So I think we could still level and re-radius these frets and get, get them all still above one millimetre, which will be absolutely fine. But because I've got my neck back now, we decided that I am going to refret it. Uh, we already know what I'm charging for this. I'm losing out on this. Uh, I am going to charge, I, should be, I said I was charging 275. I'm going to round it up to 300 quid because one, I pay the return postage, which is fine. But the thing is, I had some fret wire I was going to use on this, uh, but Tom didn't want that, he wanted bigger. So I have gone and bought the other fret wire, which has cost me 26 and a half quid. So I'm going to charge for a fret wire. I'm not going to charge for the nut, not going to charge for fitting the nut. That's 45 quid on its own. So I'm going to do the work. I'm going to get it absolutely spot on. Um, Tonight, like I say, I didn't know I haven't said yet. I'm going to remove in the frets, I'm going to remove in all the hardware, and what we're going to do is I'm going to set this neck, I'm not going to set it straight, I'm going to loosen the truss rod, and once the truss rod is loose, then I'm going to plane the fingerboard. And I'm going to level the fingerboard with the truss rod loose, which is exactly how it should be. I shouldn't have to nip this up to get, it, get the neck straight. And I'm going to radius this. I've not decided what radius I'm going to use yet. I would be thinking, 12, a 12 inch radius will be perfect along the whole length because it gives a nice Gibson type radius. Uh, I think nine and a half is too tight a radius. So I'm going to probably go with a 12 inch radius. I'm going to radius the whole board. I don't care how these, th this looks. We've just got to get it level and we've got to get it radius correctly along the whole length. Then we'll look at getting some new frets in and we'll take it from there.